In a separate video, I discussed how we can calculate this object, the commutation relationship between two observables or two operators. And the idea is that when we calculate this, it doesn't actually need a specific state. This is really just multiplying some matrices together. So if the commutation between two matrices is zero, that is a very special case. And we haven't actually met anything yet for which this is going to be true, but there are going to be some specific operators where this is true. This means that they share eigenstates. So the example that I did in the previous video was looking at the commutation relationship between Sx and Sy. We know that those have different eigenstates, that measuring spin in your x direction and measuring spin in your y direction are not the same eigenstates. So what that means, if they do share eigenstates, is that this commutation relationship is going to be zero. And another way of saying that is that it's, they share a basis that they're diagonal in. Now, What's special about this is what this means for measurement. And we've already seen for the spin simulation that if you measure what's happening in x, and then you pass, for instance, spin up in x onto y, you then get 50-50, up in y, down in y. And if you then pass that back onto x, either of those, you again get 50% spin up, 50% spin down in y. We can't simultaneously know, is it up or down in x, up or down in y? It just you can't know that. This gets us to our uncertainty principle. But in the case where the commutation is zero, that actually says you can simultaneously measure them. So at the same time, right, the simultaneous part is important. We can simultaneously, no idea how to spell that word apparently, simultane, maybe. We can simultaneously know A applied to our state and B applied to our state, right? This is going to give us some measurements and we simultaneously can know them. That's nice, right? So that is like asking, the book uses an example at the very beginning, the introduction, about socks. Is this a tall sock or a short sock? Is it a black sock or a white sock? In our everyday lives, we are used to being able to ask multiple questions at once. Is this a pink marker or a blue marker? Is it open or is it closed? But in the quantum realm, oftentimes you can't actually know both of those answers. You could know, is it open or is it closed? Or you could know, is it pink or is it yellow? Maybe not both. That's the idea of saying we can't know spin X and spin Y at the same time. So this gets us to our uncertainty relationship. And again, this is starting to look really complex because we've embedded a lot of meaning into the notation itself. So each of these, right, this is our RMS. And remember that we define that as the square root of the operator itself squared minus the expectation value squared. And this would be for some specific state psi, which is going into these expectation values, okay? And then b would be the same thing. Now, this is going to be greater than or equal to the expectation value of the commutator magnitude, because you could actually get a complex number here. So magnitude, because it could be complex, and then there's this factor of 1 half. Now, it's important to note that this is greater than or equal to, and this actually has to do with our choice of psi, that there are going to be some quantum states that are minimally uncertain states where this is going to be equal to. But there's going to be choices of states that it's worse for. So you can definitely make your whole thing much more uncertain, but there's a minimal value. And again, notice that we have our commutator on the inside, then we're taking the expectation value Right? And so what that means is you have your psi, but then what goes on the inside is a, b, minus b, a. And then again, your other state. Then we have to take that and find the magnitude. So this is our new uncertainty principle. In modern physics, you perhaps saw it written different ways. And oftentimes, there was just kind of a like, OK, well, it's bigger than this. There's a factor of 1 half. We can't really justify it. Um, 
we will do some work in here understanding a little bit more about why this happens and really it has to do with this idea that if the commutator is not zero we can't measure these things at the same time so notice that if this is zero our expectation value will be zero this whole right side is zero which means that this can be zero so if you can measure these at the same time that Heisenberg uncertainty principle doesn't apply. There are some quantum things we can know exactly at the same time, but for many others, we can't. So the classic, well, not classic example meaning classical, but the most common example used for the uncertainty principle is position and velocity, or position and momentum is really how we talk about it. Now notice that when we're talking about spin, we're not talking about position or momentum. So we will talk about this right now for spin, but later we will learn how to talk about position and momentum and this will come back. So for now it's understanding the interpretation when your commutator is zero and then now starting to work with this new uncertainty principle.